When we were kids, the opportunities that we had were almost nothing. I received a message from Jack and he said, Joe, if I was you, I, I would watch the conference at this time. I went to watch the conference and I see a dream, a dream that comes true, not just for us, but for many people. I think it has been one of the moments, one of the most exciting moments in life that day. We cry, you know, we cry that some one idea, one dream, while well, it started like really small, come true. It's a good moment to go and get involved and investing now. If you're a Bitcoiner, I think you gotta see El Salvador. You gotta come and check. I have already had a lot of people from El Salvador on. Like I covered El Salvador. I covered Bitcoin Berlin. I covered the, the, the hardware store from, from, from El Salvador. Like a lot of different angles of El Salvador. Uh, but you are from Bitcoin Beach and I actually never had anyone on from Bitcoin Beach. And for me, it's like Bitcoin Beach is like this, this origin story of all the crazy and, and good things that are happening now in El Salvador. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit before uh, uh, we get into Bitcoin uh, about Bitcoin Beach, uh, because I think most of the people know about it, but some might not be familiar with it. Like what is Bitcoin Beach and how did this all get started and how are you personally involved in, in Bitcoin Beach? Yeah, uh, Bitcoin Beach is a, it's a, it's born in 2019. Uh, we're a group of people, you know, some people know me, some people know Mike Peterson, some people know Sparky, and before, and we are, we are kids that born in Asante here in, in Salvador that now now this place is known as Bitcoin Beach, you know, and so we born here, and we see it that when we were kids, the the, the opportunities that we had were almost nothing. You know? it was this dream that if you were if you want to have success in life, you need to leave the country, you need to leave this this place because even if something was. I had some tourism back in the years, but they were more surfers, more backpackers, you know. Or something. It used to be a fisherman town, a small fisherman town, and where a lot, like many of the rich families, for instance, Salvador, used to have their second home, like a vacation home where they used to come in the on the weekend, and that's how we grew up here, you know, or. Uh, my father was a fisherman, and my grandfather was a fisherman, and my grandfather was a caretaker. You know, most of the family here in Sofia were living in properties that didn't own, but they were the caretaker who take care when the families were not here, you know. And it was a, a simple but good life because uh, the owners used to come on the weekend and, and, and you got to enjoy like the place during the week, right? That was like perfect that was one of the biggest opportunities that a lot of families were looking for, you know, being a caretaker you know you don't pay for living and they give you a salary and you know being a caretaker they they build you like a small house you know but you're living in the sometimes in the beautiful property right in front of the beach right so that was how we we were up here and we were seeing that the dream was to leave this place because we were thinking that this place had not opportunities for us and that was not hope and we didn't see our future here. And in this process, we start having like people that a tiny not life, you know, that change your, change your life in time, talking to us about dreams, talking about uh, different ways of seeing lives, talking to people that, you know, we're coming from California looking for a good way because that's something that we we have here in Sabo. Surfing is big and El Son, they have like some of the best way in Sabo. So we grab surfing and getting people, you know, traveling all the way here to surf. And one of those people is Mike Peterson. He came like 17 years ago, 18 years ago in a surf trip. 
um, a missionary trip to, and he fell in love with this place, you know, and he decided to buy a home here 70 years ago. And he was one of the person that put time in our life that he had been, that he, he was one of the person that believed in this community before, that he see the potential of this small town and you know, and start he start putting time in, in our life, right? He become our mentor or, or leader, or you know, one of these families that was teaching us about about life, right? And in that process, where kids were dreaming to live and and dreaming just to you know live this 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 town. Is where we start working together as a group to kind of lead the kids in a, in another direction, kind of teaching them about dreams, about because this is the reality, Robbie. Like a lot of people should say, "Ah, oh, don't leave," you know, fighting for your dreams. You can do it, but that's easier to say. But really, like no one teaching us how to do it, and no one give us the the. the the, the tools, the knowledge, the line to follow, right? So, in that process, we we understanding that if we want to make changes on the kids here, and they, if we want that they stop dreaming to live, we gotta provide them these tools and knowledge, and that's where we start the project. You know, teaching them values, getting together with them for surfing, very teaching them English classes, teaching them computers, computer skills, you know, and just spending, having the having quality time. And that was, the, that was the project, you know, that we were doing as a team. And that was, that was really good, you know, because we already, we already seen the local kids getting like better in English, you know, better computer skills and they start to work in hotels, you know, working in restaurants, being surf instructor, getting more involved with the with the tourism that, you know, was starting like booming here, you know. And but now we're connecting that we were missing something, right? And and to, in two thousand nineteen, uh, our project it came from more than 10 years, right? That we have been working, trying to give it back to the kids some of the help that we received, you know, trying to replicate what these people like Mike Peterson, like Alex, like just to mention that some of the names of the people that we find in our, in our life, right? We, we start working with the kids here and but in 2019, someone approached Mike uh, with the, asking him for help, you know, to... They were another organization that they received a Bitcoin donation, but they don't know what to do with, with that donation. And at the time, in 2019, Mike was already to Bitcoin. He already get it. And he helped them. And then they 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 asked him if he would be interested to meeting with the person that was donated to that and see if they if this person would be interesting on supporting the projects that we were doing here in the Salvador. And he attended this meeting with this person and you know this person was not the donor, was someone that was representing the donor, right? And this person met with Mike and and request like, okay, we help, you know, like projects, nonprofit organizations. So if we will decide to support you guys, what would you do with these donations? You know, and Mike explained all the projects that we were doing, the English classes. That we were in a small town in Salvador, that it was, uh, you know, like we were teaching computer skills, we have a scholarship for college. And this guy requests, like, okay, send me a proposal. What 
what you guys will do with Bitcoin if we support to if we support your project. So that the same day Mike write a letter, right? That explaining what we were doing and how we will use the Bitcoin, you know, how we will create this circle economy, you know. Now now everyone talk about Bitcoin circle economies, but before that concept doesn't exist, right? What is a Bitcoin circle economy? So in the letter he explained what we will do with Bitcoin you know, to create that the nation that we will receive that Bitcoin will circulate into the economy and creating into the community and creating that like a like a like a local market, you know, like where we will teach people how to use Bitcoin, right? And so that letter you can read it because later in the years, now we create the Bitcoin Beach white paper that is basically a line, a basic line how we did, and is that white paper have been helping other projects to replicate what we create, you know, it's it's called a Bitcoin Beach white paper. You can it's an open source document. It's in GitHub. You can go to the Bitcoin Beach page on Twitter, and there is the first tweet that is pinning there. You can you can download it there, and you can read that the, that first letter is there. And then we develop all the concept into a uh, uh, Bitcoin Beach white paper. Right, the Bitcoin Beach white paper we created uh, as a guideline to. That other other communities, other leaders that were inspired about the success of Bitcoin Beach and being interested in replicating that, mm. like an initiative, a similar initiative. So we create this document that is open source that everyone can read it, and basically it's a catalog. You know, it's like Bitcoin. The white paper is, but you can apply it to your own reality, to your country, to your own environment that like i say in 2019 we were rewarding the, the, the kids you know we were when we received the first the, the donation in bitcoin we were finding ways to create something that now we know as a bitcoin circle economy but back in the days that concept didn't exist you know we developing and we creating what is a bitcoin circle economy how 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 that looked like, you know, and the beginning was, you know, we have projects with kids, so we were rewarding the students for being good students, rewarding the kids for cleaning the beach, for cleaning the, um, the river, and they get rewards in Bitcoin, and that was one place, probably in 2019, in, in El Sonte, that is called Mama Rosa. When you come, we will go to who's up there, because... That was the first place in whole El Salvador to that was accepting bit, Bitcoin payments, you know. So the students, the people that were working in the project that start to receiving their salaries in Bitcoin, you know, they were to Mama Rosa to buy pupusas, to have lunch, to buy their basic needed, right? In, in, in Bitcoin. And Mama Rosa was the Mama Rosa is the Jorge's mother. So Jorge is one of the founder of Bitcoin Beach and Hope House. So it was, let's say, Mama Rosa trusts trust us and trusts Jorge, right? So, um, but we were, you know, 2019 was a really exciting year for for us because we add that year we add another to to the whole package that we were trying to teach to the kids right and that thing it was something that no one teaching you around the world there is financial education you know no one teaching you even in germany even in the united states even in canada you know no one teaching us what money is how money works what is money you know those simple questions that are super simple but i think for most of the Bitcoiners now, one of the things, the most important thing that Bitcoin brought, brought to us is to understand money and start having questions about it. You know? 
So 2019 was that year that we started developing, you know, using Bitcoin in our projects, paying English classes, paying families that were working in the project. Having Mama Rosa accepting big payments, you know. So that article that was right by Force in 2020 by Tatiana, uh, it was explaining what was happening in this small town in El Salvador, right? Mm. It was like it was like this little town in El Salvador is using Bitcoin in a daily basis, right? They're creating the first Bitcoin circular economy, and that was in 2020. And when their article went out from Forbes, you know, Forbes, Forbes magazine. It was huge. Like I remember the the article was publishing, let's say today and the next day, we had well, first people were calling, you know, like some friends that were working in banks and finance here in the country, they're like, is this is true? It's happening in Sante, you know, like it's happening. Is this is this article is real? Or uh, yeah, it's real. You should come and check it out, you know. And the next day, Robbie, really after that article, we start to having news, the local news from the mayor, like TV channels here from El Salvador, knocking in the door and saying, like, hey, where is Bitcoin Beach? Who's running Bitcoin Beach? You know, what's happening? Why Forbes is writing about this? And and from there, it went vital, right? Like we start to having like people from all over the world coming here to see what was happening here. You know, we start having like people like Jack Mahler's game. Jack Mahler's came in in 2021, but my Miles Suter came to Nicolas came. That Nicolas is the founder of Galoi. He built he built like a small wallet for us that was called Bitcoin Beach Wallet. Now it's Blink, and now Blink it's become a a wallet. A company is one of the most successful Lightning wallet that exists around the world, right? But it was it was created with thinking for this small community, right? But I I think from there. It's where you, everyone have been hearing, right? That Bitcoin Beach was the first Bitcoin circular economy. And 2001, well, 2020 was a big year of seeing all this potential and this excitement and these people from all over the world traveling here coming. And it gets crazy in 2021, when the president announced in, in the conference in Miami that Bitcoin will be legal tender here, after that, the next day, people fly out from Miami to come to El Salvador and see the first Bitcoin country or see El Salvador and, and asking like, what can I do? I'm excited. I, ha I have been dreaming for this for years, you know, because I think that is the... That is the reality, you know, when the president make Bitcoin a legal tender here, it give, it make it make that dream for many people, right? Not just for for us, but that dream that one day you will be the first Bitcoin country. And now here we are, you know, here we are in Bitcoin country. Bitcoin is a legal tender. Bitcoin is you can come here and live in a Bitcoin standard. That was like it's even sounds surreal right it's just, people don't imagine you know and every week every day here we have a new people that come exciting right i've been waiting to come to el Salvador because i i want to spend bitcoin i want to see how that feel you know i want to see my first i want to do my first lightning transaction and that have been non non-stop man since 2000 2000 21 it's, it's it had been a big uh, process here how how was it when Jack Malas came down because I think Jack Malas was really uh central essential for then also meeting with the president a Bukele, and then like announcing it also on stage in the Bitcoin conference uh like what, what was it apparent when uh, Jack Malas came the first times 
uh, that something big is happening uh, or was it just like oh there's he wants to build an app for the, for for lightning transactions or like how was how was it when Jack Malas came to Bitcoin Beach Jack came to to check and spend time with us at Bitcoin Beach right with any any expectation you know he came and I think he was surprised about what was happening here you know and you know when you build something that that's happened a lot to the programmers or the engineers or developers you know that they build something but most of the time they don't see the result how people use it you know but i think he was like shocked about how a small community was transforming and was having access for the first time and see that hope and people and see that potential that Asante was providing and was showing to the rest of the country, but also like that excitement for the rest of the world, right? That one community can 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 start a like really small dreaming big, right? And I think that was crucial. We spent a lot of time with, with Jack talking about process, talking about the opportunities, talking about, you know, that 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 the same problem that we were facing here in El Sonte was the same problem that exists in uh, in in the in the country. You know, the country had if we would had ninety percent of people on bank without a bank account, El Salvador in the entire country had 70% of people that that, that that didn't have a bank account, you know? So Jack showed that that example that was set up here, why we don't try to bring it to the whole country, you know? And Jack is, is for me, is one of my favorite Bitcoiner, one of the person that I, I admire a lot. And... And he's 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 here for Bitcoin, right? He's here for the for the mission. He's he's you know he have a successful company. Strike a strike at the time was not his big company, you know. But he he came, and I think he was interested to open in other markets at the time, and to launch an in strike in other countries. But he came here, and he say, "Wait a minute." I have been building this up for these people to give access to people that didn't have access. This is this is what strike is, right? This is why the purpose of strike. That's 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 what he's saying. He's like, it didn't make sense that the strike focus in another countries when this is the country that I should focus and set up the example from here for the rest of the world. And he's like. Strike is launching here, you know, and he, he did the, the announcement over, over after a couple of months he was here uh, with us. He's like, well, we're going to launch a strike here. And he did this big announcement on, on on Twitter and he went viral, right? Like, he was like oh, that's good, you know, that's that's what we need. And, and it went crazy and... And he, and he was, you know, I remember, I remember Jack saying, saying like, well, if, if we can get like 5,000 users in one month, you know, in two months, we will be happy. But it's, it went crazy, right? Strike start to getting like 20,000 users, 30,000 users, 40,000 users, you know, I went crazy man and and it was uh it was a good moment you know and everyone was talking about strike el salvador and and then we all know what he explained you know he get contacted by one of the brother of the president and say hey come we need to talk you know and 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 i think that was crucial right jack helped to accelerate something that it could happen later in years, later in town, but he's he he was keen on you know accelerate that process and and I think the president is a visionary 
leader mm-hmm. that can see the potential and they working together in in 2019 you know they did the announce it but it was crazy that moment that moment robbie that day i was not watching the conference mike mike was at the conference but i was not watching the conference i, I was doing another thing and i i received a message from from jack and he said Joe, if I was you, I, I would watch the conference at this time and going in on stage at this time and you just say, I hope you I, I hope I make you proud. I and I went to watch the conference, <laughs> right? I, I went to watch the conference and I see like, you know, a dream, a dream that comes true, not just for us, but mm-hmm. for many people. I think it has been one of the moments one of the most exciting moments in life that day we cry you know we cry that some one idea one dream that was started like really small become true and the jersey that jack used that day the, the el Salvador jersey i give it to him because me and jack we make the this the birthday in the same day so i give it to him and and that that year, that year Jai was here, 2021, he was here in April. And we celebrate together the, the birthday, you know. My friends buy two cakes, we make a big barbecue and, you know, good moments. I think uh, those, those are going to be like moments to remember, right, for, for life. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing, how to buy Bitcoin. It's simple. Have a Bitcoin only exchange. Don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges. Don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that. Be on a Bitcoin only exchange. I use 21 Bitcoin. 21 Bitcoin is for me the best partner for that. And now where do you store Bitcoin? Bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet, on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet. So that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in the middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague Conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. That's amazing. I, I, I love the story so much. Uh, and you also talked about financial uh, education where you like brought in uh, those projects about financial education and Bitcoin education uh, with the kids. Um, are there like now programs in place? I heard a little bit of programs that are now explaining to the new generation Bitcoin, uh, to the new generation financial education. Uh, is those Are those like private uh, uh, things or is this like maybe like a school program from El Salvador? Uh, how is like the... Because I think if you want to make a really great impact in the country long term, uh, you have to like really um, get the education going for the new generation, like even gen- uh, education for everybody right now there, but especially for the younger generation that they are, as you said, in Germany, in, in Austria, there is no financial education as in everyone, uh, everywhere in the world, but it would be a great step for El Salvador. Uh, to like establish financial education, Bitcoin education, uh, like really uh, soon. That are there some some projects that also in Bitcoin Beach and or like in the in the country? Yes, yes. A lot of people. I think we all agree that education is key, right? Is 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 the key to success. Educating people, you know, 
uh, once you understand Bitcoin, you think it's easier for people to understand it. But it, it, the reality is that most of the people, it took time to, to get it, right? If you choose, I don't know, like a random now understand Bitcoin, and you say like, hey, how long it took you to, from the first time that you hear for the first time Bitcoin, about Bitcoin, until you really understanding and you purchase your first SAT. It's like a few people will say, oh, no, I hear about Bitcoin today and in a week I was buying Bitcoin, you know. Most of the people hear about Bitcoin and then be years until they say like, oh, I really get it, you know, and now I'm buying Bitcoin. Why? I, I, I understand it, right? So Salvador, you need to understand that Bitcoin just become a legal tender a little bit more than two years now. In September, we're, are going to be three three years. And most of the people hear about Bitcoin from that time, you know. And if you come to places like Bitcoin Beach and you see, oh, hear people understanding more about Bitcoin, yes, because we're a little bit early into, into that. But eventually, it's just timing. You know? The timing will will solve them this 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 problem right it's this process but a good thing now is that there are there are so many initiatives now one of the biggest initiatives that have been not having a lot of traction is one of the projects that uh, we are working with the minister of education the yeah, the minister, the minister of education, my first Bitcoin in Bitcoin Beach, we're working uh, together to training public teachers from the public schools about Bitcoin. And then these, these teachers will back to their school and training students, you know. And we did the first pilot last year with training mm, 150 teachers from the public school and then they went back to their school and they they training around I think 2,500 students and this year we just start with the first session like a couple of weeks three weeks ago that this year we're going to train 500 almost 600 teachers from the public schools and these teachers will back to their schools and they will train in around 18,000 students from the public, from the public schools, you know. So this is huge, you know. And then separately to this, there are great initiatives. Like my first Bitcoin, they focus in a daily basis on Bitcoin education. Then there is no nations that there is another project that they're, wo they're, they're working also with the Minister of Education to install it like notes, lighting notes in public schools and training students in the more with more tech skills and yeah, tech skills, you know. And then there are there are like Tarogos, there is Kubo Plus, there is another great initiative, more who is more tech, you know, like they're training like local developers. There is Kuba Plus, man. You should see these, these guys, Stacy, the Bitcoin office, Stacy, Stacy and Max, they have been really involved in on that. And they training last year, the first group of Salvadorian developers, you know, and and that was huge. And if you see those kids, or the, they're not kids, they're like young guys, right? 20s, 22, 23, 25. And there's some ones that are older, but man, it's crazy what they're doing now and see their tech skills that they're getting. Some of them, they're already working. Some of them, they're doing an internship with some companies, Bitcoin companies, you know, and I think it's, it's just exciting what have been, what's Hubble have been accomplishing in just two years, you know, and 
not just in education, right? Education is key. It's, it's, it's where we need to focus. And and every day there are new people or new companies. One of the things that I also, um, you know, get, I admire and I get surprised. I will never imagine, man, that a Salvadorian company or a Salvadorian, Salvadorian people will build a Bitcoin company, you know, or build a Bitcoin, uh, build a company on top of Bitcoin technology and start to providing solutions, financial solutions to not just El Salvador, but also like to outside El Salvador, exporting technology outside of El Salvador, you know, and this is like huge, you know, to see these Salvadorian companies that are working in on Bitcoin technology and are getting success and are leading the way, you know. So, you know, there are so many great initiatives happening, uh, Robbie, and that's why you can have like an overview, you know, having a sense over Twitter what's what's happening, but like really, like it's, it's you you really understand what, what what's really happening is when you come here, you know, because. Every week there are Bitcoin meetups in South Salvador. We have meetups here in, in, in Bitcoin Beach. There is uh, meetups in Berlin. There is project with Cool World Plus. There is Volcano Nation. There is Targos. There is so many events every day that you're like, sometimes it's hard to keep up with everything that is happening, you know. So I, my my advice to everyone is like I can tell you, but sometimes it's hard to solve the idea of what is happening. You you guys need to come and 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 verify. You know? Definitely, and I think I encourage everybody. Even though I did not do it myself, uh, I am planning to doing it in November, uh, coming to El Salvador, and I encourage everybody just visit El Salvador. I hear, I hear so many great things uh, from people that. Uh, were from El Salvador, went out of El Salvador, and now came back. I hear stories from people that uh, were just like living outside. They were living in London, they were living in Germany, but then they decided to come to El Salvador and they stayed in El Salvador. So there's clearly something really positive and great happening, even beyond uh, Bitcoin, I think. Uh, there's something greater happening in there. Uh, and I feel like there's a, a, a storm to be, to El Salvador. There are like like more and more people want to come to El Salvador or starting to plan to uh, El Salvador or visiting El Salvador. Uh, is this noticeable? As like you are living in El Salvador, do you see? Is do you notice that there are more tourists? There are more people uh, buying houses there. There are more people. Uh, make, making the shift to making the main residence in El Salvador. Do you notice that as a as a citizen of El Salvador. Yeah, no, it's it's that that is a that is a good question, and I think El Salvador is in the map now. The narrative of El Salvador is have been changing. El Salvador, like, have been changing forever. Like the president say, and I I'm agree with you. It's more bigger than Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is is it's part of this transformation, but I think it's also like. When you have a great leader, uh, a great leader inspire people to do good, to want to participate. You know, a great leader is a great leader that provide that open freedom for for the people. You know, and I think that's what we have here in Sapir. We have a, a great leader. You know, that is doing the right thing for the people, and that is in in the whole context, right? And I think what is, this is from the human perspective, you know, we want to live in a place where we are exciting for the future. We want to live in a place where we have hope, where we have freedom, you know, and I think we only need two things, hope and freedom. And once you have these two things, it's where you see the magic happen, right? where you see people dreaming, where you see people exciting about the future, where you see families uh, that want to have kids, people that want to have companies, people that want to share with other people, people that want to help each other, you know, because there is this hope 
there is this excitement, right? And I think this is what's happening here in El Salvador. It's we have that hope and freedom and that proud. We feel proud for the first time in a long time, right? We feel proud to be Salvadorian. We feel proud to be here. We feel proud to do our part, to contribute, you know, to help each other, right? And I think that's what that's what people are looking, you know, because that freedom and, and hope that I'm talking, it used to be attached to countries like USA, Canada, Europe, you know, and I keep hearing more often that people that are living there, they don't feel it anymore. You know, that something's changing, right? And when something is changing, people start to looking for places that provide that hope and freedom. And they're they're coming here and they're feeling that, you know. And I think that is it's beautiful that our country is providing that hope and freedom for us, but also that hope for people around the world, you know, and and you I I I have a real estate company called Good Life El Salvador, and we have been we we're helping. And every week, Robbie, we receive I don't know how many emails every week of new people looking for you know like El Salvador represent different things also for different people. You know, like a lot of the people. They just want to, you know, having a plan B, <laughs> having a plan B, having a, a home here that they can come and spend six months per year and six months, whatever, or something happen, you know, having a plan B, being ready, right, to, to come and live full time. Or some other people understanding that El Salvador is like, like a, like a startup, you know, that everything is moving, right? So people that are used to investing in a startup in early stage of companies, they're approaching El Salvador in the same way. And they're seeing like, wait, this is a country that is moving, that is going in this direction up. This is a good moment to go and, and get involved and investing now in all type of sectors right now we're seeing tourism booming right real estate is booming here you know and but you also have that that family or that guy that is already retired that get to the point that say i don't want to build another company in the U in the united states i don't want to build another company in europe it's too tied with regulation you know whatever we want to do is like a lot of things, and they come into El Salvador to just want a place to come and relaxing. And eventually, you see these people saying like, "Well, I mean, I cannot just come and relax here. You know, I I need to get involved in something. And I, what are my skills? Why I don't move my company from Canada here? What I don't start my the company that I just retired, I just sold. I had these skills, and I can apply in here. You know, and I can support the locals and." Bring worse jobs, better pay. So it's 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 a it's an exciting moment that everyone come with not expectation with any idea, but everyone live with a a clear idea of of, of what they want to do, you know. And I think it's it's beautiful, you know, and something that I we have been have been touching me and have been changing my mind is when I start to see families leaving Canada, lobby to me and moving to El Salvador, you know. But families leaving Europe and say, hey, I wanna I want that my kids grew up in El Salvador, you know, or People coming and say, hey, I want the Salvadorian passport so bad, you know. I want to support what the government is doing, what El Salvador is doing. I think that's what you were saying that is more bigger than Bitcoin. 
I think that's exactly what is happening here. People, people that are coming here, they, 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 they just, they don't just want to buy a home here or move their company from Canada to here or from Europe to here, but they want to be part of history, you know, and I think I really believe history is happening here. And this example, it will show to the rest of the world, you know, how this country will change because even in short period, Sabo have been changing so much now and it's exciting. Yeah, it's definitely exciting. And uh, when we also see like steps from the Bukele with the free passports for skilled people, I think it was like 5,000 or something like that. Uh, and so many great steps he took and the Bitcoin Beach and uh, the whole country took and the initiative uh, you are doing is, is, is it's just beautiful to, to observe that uh, what's going on in El Salvador. Um, which leads me to my next question, like what, what's next for El Salvador? Like what's, what are the, the next steps uh, in for El Salvador to build on that great uh, thing that are happening over the last like three years, uh, which built an extremely fast development uh, from like, okay, we have the highest murder rate to one of the lowest murder rates. And we have a booming tourism, real estate is booming, uh, Bitcoin is doing good. Uh, people want to move here. Like, what's 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 like the next ten years looking like for El Salvador? Just building more and more out. Is it ed education? Uh, is it stuff like from from the Bukele bring more skilled people in? Uh, like, what what do you think is like, like in the in the f next few years happening for El Salvador? I don't know, man. But <laughs> but definitely definitely the the future looks great. And I think everyone is exciting for what is coming, right? Because, you know, people are talking that El Salvador will be the next Singapore, Latin, or I don't know, I think even better because Singapore is not, not that beautiful how our country is, right? We have, we have everything, everything here, right? From mountains, volcanoes, lake, ocean, rivers, food, people, perfect weather, you know, and so I think it's from now on, what I see from our small, our perspective is that now is the time that we're going to see real changes, right? Like on building, you know, and all the great initiative, like El Salvador is, att is attracting the smarter people around the world, you know, and when I say this, you gotta see the people that are coming here, you know, it's like literally there are the smarter people in the world, you know, looking at Salvador and saying like, hey, I want to see how can I help. I want to see how I am coming to me to, to build, to support, to create the infrastructure, you know. I don't when I say I don't know, because it's hard to imagine, right? Like, well, how it's going to be. But definitely it's going to be something that is happening here. I think it's going to be the example for many places, you know. And and I really hope, this is one of the things that I really hope, that our people here are going to be part of, the, of these big changes, you know. And that the lives like level of will will go up and you know like, and that's what we're seeing now you know like i think there's people that are still dreaming to leave the country looking for better opportunities and but that is that is changing you know that is changing a lot right the young people here are dreaming that is possible here. And I think when you dream, you have a chance, right? You have a chance that this door, the door, this small door is open and you have a chance to matter in life, right? Having dreams, having goals, it's super important for your personal 
you know, like life, you know, to have something to wake up every day and, and, and live your life and give the best you can, right? But I think El Salvador is dreaming. I, I, I see it that, that El Salvador is dreaming and now it's hard to imagine where this dream will be, right? But is if the whole country is dreaming, I think in 10 years we're going to be in a place that it's going to be it's going to be hard to see back and say like, wow, it's it's crazy, you know, how far we have been moving and, you know, see, all, see a little country changing and transforming on one of the best countries in the planet, right? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to what El Salvador is doing, also for other countries, because El Salvador is now, uh, as I think, the role model for global Bitcoin adoption. El Salvador is testing and trying out a lot of the things that we need all over the world. Uh, and uh, when El Salvador is really successful, this is good for Bitcoin. Uh, when Bitcoin is really successful, this is really good for El Salvador. So uh, it has this really good positive uh, synergies that, that El Salvador has. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to what the future for El Salvador and the future for Bitcoin brings in the like, next 10, 20 years. Uh, because I see a lot of great partnerships also from El Salvador, other nation states maybe, that want to like partner up and copy uh, what El Salvador is, is doing. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just like really fascinating to see the whole story playing out. And that's why I'm, I'm liking so many the, the, the interviews with El Salvadorians because you can feel it. Like uh, if, when you talk with someone, they can talk a lot, but you can really feel it in their voice, in their guess, uh, in their... Uh, their their movements of the body, they they are really hopeful and they are positive for the future. And this is not just like talking; this is actually like something that's going on. And I think, as you said before, when you go directly to El Salvador, set foot on the ground, and actually experience it, this will just enhance the feeling even more. And then you can feel it. Then really, what's what's happening in El Salvador? So I'm I'm really I'm. I, I I love what's going on there, and I'm I'm just ashamed that I was not there yet. Uh, but I will be there uh, hopefully this year, and I'm I'm looking forward to meeting you there. And look, look, Robbie, like you say, I can I can talk from the perspective of being a kid, right? That born in an environment that we didn't see that hope. And that exciting about the future and our life was more like tough times, right? And I see it now from where we were kids and the type of opportunities that we had comparing to now, it's huge, man. So Salvador is another country, you know, and that is something that is it's El Salvador is building the base now. That's how I see it. Building the base. Building the base is hard. Building on top of the base, the foundation is history. So I think from now on, it's just exciting the times that are coming, you know. And and you see it from even like expat that just moved here one year, two years ago. And they're they're exciting, you know. They're like they, they they see just in two years they, they, the amounts of changes that they see, it's it's huge, you know, and they cannot see where we kick where we coming from, right? They just can hear and, and read, but we that we live and we know from where we coming from, where we are now, it's huge, you know, and it's beautiful to see it. So, man, I think is definitely. I think, like you say, I'll. I'll or something to prove and show that one community can change using this technology. Uh, and I think Salvador will prove and show that one country can change too, you know, using this technology and having, like I say, the great leader, right? And the right thing for the people. That's going to be huge, you know? And I can, I can tell you 
as a Salvadorian, hi, I'm exciting to live here. I wake up and I see the future. I wake up and I see the future for my kids here, you know, and, and that's where it, that's, that's the feeling, you know, that's peaceful thing. It's, it's, it's beautiful, right? It's beautiful. And I think people are, when they come to here to Sabor, that's what they, they see. And another thing is like, if you are, if you have a Bitcoin company, if you have a, if you're a Bitcoiner, I think, uh, you gotta see El Salvador. You gotta come and check. You know, like all the great initiative for moving your company here. Or if you are like, like this new program with the five thousand free passport. If you are like someone that can provide value to the country, you know, that is huge, right? And and it's happening, right? So that means it's, you know, people say like, yeah, but who's gonna pay one million dollar for for the Salvadorian passport? That's what People were saying, you know, when you met people, you meet people that say, man, I pay one million dollar and that is super exciting because that's what I was hoping and and I want to support this, you know. So things are happening and not real, Robbie. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, we have an end routine uh, in the podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest. Uh, without knowing who the next guest actually is. Uh, and your question from the previous guest uh, is uh, interesting because it's uh, how do you think uh, Bitcoin helps humanity? Like what's the main thing that Bitcoin will uh, enhance in humanity? <laughs> that is a good question. I think Bitcoin is is for everyone. Bitcoin is the equal opportunity, equal opportunity, not equal result, right? But Bitcoin allows everyone to have the same opportunities, you know? And it doesn't matter if you are from a poor country, like whatever, right? Like Salvador or a poor country in Africa or, 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 or Brazil, or if you are from the United States, Canada, Europe, Bitcoin is the equal opportunity. Before, before, before Bitcoin, if you were born in Europe, United States, Canada, you already have more opportunities than anyone else around the world, you know. But with Bitcoin, we have the same opportunity. You know what that means for the first time to have access to the same assets that Michael Saylor have access in Miami or the same asset that black rock is buying and someone like green or someone like someone that don't even have a bank account in africa or in el Salvador have the same access to participate and purchase the same thing that people like michael sailor and black rock want that is huge for me and i think that's the equal is equal is for everyone it gives access and give freedom, and that's why I give hope, you know, because we all see that hope. And if people don't see it yet, it's just a matter of time. And but I, I hope, you know, more people. This is the, this is the opportunity that we never had, and we have it now. One hundred percent, and it's it's a beautiful answer. Uh, I just saw, unfortunately, that I wrote, uh, read the wrong uh, question. <laughs> I, I messed up, but it, it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful answer. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I give you another question, if you don't mind, if you, have, yeah, if you still have time. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the actual question was was, uh, what do you wish to accomplish in your life the most? What's what's like the the one thing that you want to accomplish in your life? <laughs> that is a good question and that is a hard question man because i think the dreams evolve with the with the years with time you know back in the years one of my big one of my biggest dream was buying a home for my mom 
And because I grew up living, I lived in the street for seven years and we didn't have a place, you know, to, to live. And that was my, that was my, my dream, right? That I have been working for the, for the last years, you know, and I did. So I did now. So I'm that, that is one. And now, you know, our second dream was to have a family and we have a family now. We have our, our kid now. He's almost four months old. And I think family, it's everything, right? Like if your family is good and you can build family that also provide uh, an example for other families is it's the best you know and and that is where we work you know we want to have a healthy family more kids and being able to always help you know always help other people uh our dream now is we're supporting a lot of bitcoin circuit economies around the world different projects we we'll spend days and days trying to support them at different levels. And I think I want to keep doing that. You know, I want to keep, I want to keep feeling that my time, I, I know we're not going to be here forever, but I think that day when we're going to leave, we're going to use our time in a positive way. You know, I, that's why I live my life. I don't like to wait to leave the things that I can leave. You know, I don't like to planning too much in the future. Even if I think it's, it's important planning, it's important to, you know, having a plan that you also don't need to forget to leave, right? And that's that's where we are, you know, living our life, having dreams, having goals, but don't forget your life is today too, right? And do it with the things that you have, enjoying every. Join your family, join your friends. Do, if you have a business idea, do it now. If you want to do something for Bitcoin, don't expect him. Do it now, you know, because this is your time. I think we are living the best time of our life and it's now, right? That's what we have. 100%. I love it a lot. Uh, thank you for for uh, giving us two, two end routine questions. <laughs> Uh, I'm loving it. Uh, and uh, b before I let you go, where can people find you? Like when people have questions about El Salvador or they're like moving there or they have something that they want to reach out to you, have some questions that you that uh, they want to ask you, where can people reach out to you in the best way? Yeah, uh, they can do it through Twitter or Telegram or uh, my Twitter is Roman Martinez C and my real estate company is Good Life in Salvador. Good life. And if you have if they have questions related to real estate, they can reach out to Good Life. Uh, I'm not there like answer all the emails or or having the communication, but uh, they can request to you know talk to talk to me, talk to us, and also. If you want to replicate one of the, you know, if you're thinking like, oh, I would love to understand how can I create a Bitcoin super economy or how can I start a meetup or how can I start onboarding merchants in my, in my town, I'm reach out to us, reach out to Bitcoin Beach on Twitter or send us an email and we will be happy to support, you know, in any capacity we can. And we are, you will see we're something that we're launching in the next week, a uh, grand, grand program with in collaborate, collaboration with Geyser and, and the Federation of Big Principal Economies next week uh, for all the people that are building a big principal economy, want to build a big principal economy, we're going to do in this run. And the idea is to support you know helping that if our work can make it easier for you guys 
we want to share this with you, right? So that's the that's the message, and of course, highly recommending come and check, come and visit El Salvador, come and visit Bitcoin Beach, come and visit Berlin, come and visit El Salvador, you know, and you cannot come here. Well, there are so many places also around the world, like Bitcoin Secret Economies that you can support, like Bitcoin Ecasi uh, in South Africa. They're having a second Bitcoin conference in January next year. There is Bitcoin Guatemala and Bitcoin Lake. There is Bitcoin Jungle in Costa Rica. There is Bitcoin Motif in Peru. There is Raya Bitcoin in Brazil. Just to name some of some of the projects, right? That Go. we as a bitcoiner we need to support guys we need to support this project like and sometimes the best support is just traveling posting posting on twitter you know talking about the project and trying to get involved sometimes it doesn't require like a lot to be a bit support right so come and visit uh, Roman. Uh, I love it uh, thank you for being on Roman yeah thank you <laughs>